And we're watching shares at Disney after shareholders back the company's uh, board nominees, rejecting activist Nelson Peltz. Join us now, Jessica Reef Ehrlich, B of A Securities uh, Senior U.S. Media and Entertainment Analyst. Good to have you on uh, this morning. Having me all the way in here in Times Square. This. It, you're raising your price target, I think? We did earlier in the week. Earlier in the week. Not based on this, then? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, it's based on, on operating performance. Although, but in your view, what happened will sort of take, unshackle Bob Iger to do what he wants to do. Look, it was a major distraction, a very expensive and nasty and lengthy battle. And Disney came out with guns blazing. And it was, it was kind of unusual. They had tons of promotion and press releases and calls and outreach. Um, but it's done. They won by a substantial margin, and now they can get on to dealing with all the, all the issues that were facing them before and still facing them. They even played nice with the governor of Florida just so that they could focus on this. It they need like. to move on. Is it done, done though? Hold on. Do you really believe that Ike Perlmutter and Nelson and Peltz, Peltz. Yeah. but I, I actually think this is more Ike than even Nelson, but that they are gone? Or do you think that this is like this cloud that's now going to be over over everybody waiting to see where things are next year? Well, Bob Iger, I think most people would agree, he's, he's a tremendous executive. He's been incredibly successful with one major mishap right. in, in terms of his past you know, su successor. Um, and he, but he seems to be firmly in command and control. Right. And oh, I'm not suggesting company. that he's not. I'm just wondering whether you think that there's going to be this sort of, like, is there a little birdie on the back of your shoulder <laughs> thinking, okay, uh, we got to really make this work immediately because otherwise these people are back again. Well, they need to make it work, period, whether it's immediate or not. Some of, the, some of these issues are not immediate. So there's a lot you can do about DTC, but turning the film division around isn't overnight. It just isn't. You can see what's going on with Warner Brothers Discovery and turning around DC Films. So... It takes years. It takes time, some, some TLC. But I think, you know, the focus is there. Obviously, they've got strategic issues as well. You think the easy thing is direct-to-consumer and streaming? I think it's that easy. seems like a pretty big problem, too. It, it, it's, it, obviously, it's a major challenge. I don't mean to belittle it at all. But it's, their strategy seems very clear to, to really, you know, be more efficient in terms of cost. They overspent in content and marketing and technology. And then to, you know, have the, however many originals they need to keep people engaged and keep them from turning off this, the service. So being more cost efficient and, you know, being, uh, you know, I, I don't, it's not easy to be better with content, but, but really make content that maybe is a little bit higher quality and a little more focused. Immediately. I mean, I've, I've seen a couple articles just in the last two days. Okay, here's, the, here's who's going to take over for Iger. So that's, that started immediately after after, so we're back to that, right? You know, it's a, it's a self-imposed uh, 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 news over his head. Like, it's just, if, he did, if Bob Iger didn't say, and I know he's coming on later, which will be amazing, but if he didn't say, I'm, I'm leaving in 2026, none of us would be talking about it. All right. So who is it going to be? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there, there are certainly times to train a successor at that company. All right. Uh, it, 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 you don't have a view on a name? <laughs> no, I'm not going to throw out names because there are several candidates who could be amazing. What, what about the sports prospects and this tie-up with multiple other players, Fox, Warner Brothers? Like, what, what, what would potentially work in that scenario? Because it seems like it, it was thrown out, kind of thrown together. It ticked off the NFL and other leagues in, in the process because they didn't know it was coming even right. when they were in negotiations right. with them. And we still don't understand how or if it works. The sports JV, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of an unknown. It, it seems like the price, we know the price will be 45 to $50. It will be an incomplete package. Is it good enough? And our concern is that it will encourage people to leave the pay TV bundle because if you're paying $200 now, and you're there for sports, paying 50 may be a, better a real bargain. Yeah. But if you're a cordless person, whether you're a cord never, a cord cutter, and you're going from no, not paying to paying $50, that seems like a big jump. So I don't, I don't know how this works in their favor. Having said that, it does seem like their goal is to be wherever consumers are. I, I just don't know why you'd pay $50 for a, a bundle and then pay $35, $40, or $45 for ESPN flagship. The... Uh the studios. I don't. I wouldn't know what to do if, if I were there. I mean, he's 
it's almost like in the past, okay, Pixar, all right, that's working for a while. All right, let's do Star Wars. All right, you can't feed the beast forever, can you? And, and superhero movies, are, are those going to be the answer? I mean, what do they need to get back to at Disney? I mean, hopefully they will get back to original titles. Most of the titles coming out, look, who, it could be very successful, but they're all based on existing characters or, or existing movies. And it's, it, it takes time. Um, but, you know, the originality, like last year was Barbenheimer, and that was amazing. But, they, you know, they, they, they don't have the feel to themselves. Your parent company, Universal, has done an incredible job in film. And WBD, like Warner Brothers Discovery, is coming up right behind them. They are rejuvenating DC films. They are, you know, they've had an amazing run with Legendary, with Dune 2, with Godzilla. They've got The Joker coming out. So it's, it's, it's more competitive. People used to run away. If Disney said this is the release date, Everybody ran away, and it's so it's really competitive, but it is Bob's focus. A huge part of their success, though, has been major um, acquisitions that Bob was responsible for. Whether that be something with Pixar, whether that be something with Lucas, whether that be something with Marvel. I mean, those led to amazing runs where it was a massive download of content. It's almost like a drug company going out and buying a small biotech company and saying right. we're going to buy this pipeline. That's what he has done right. for years. Can he do another purchase? Would that be allowed? Could you get it through? I mean, it, it probably it, so. would be allowed, but it, that branded film strategy worked for a decade. And, and as I said, like every studio of Disney said, this is our release date, everybody ran away yeah. because it was so powerful. It, they, they, it, there's been a catch up period. And so, you know, Bob, look, Bob Iger spent the last year since he came back restructuring the company and he did an amazing job. Morale's great. Costs have come down. They're still improving the cost structure. Now he's got to focus on growth. And that was the purpose of our note earlier in the week. The focus is now driving growth. So revenue we see is like kind of mid single digits. If, they, if the ad market comes back, maybe it can be higher. But they really need to grow the bottom line. Is a year and a half enough time for Bob Iger to recreate his magic? Because he's a long-term guy. Right. Well, we, as again, I think he's one of the most successful executives that certainly I've seen in my career. And he's, you know, his legacy is now, be, you know, going to be proving himself over the next two to three years. What's the media business? Is the media business going to recreate its magic in the next year and a half? It's a really tough business. You know, it makes you wonder, you know, Skydance slash Redbird coming in to take over Paramount, or likely coming in to take over Paramount. You know, you've got to have a lot of energy and a vision to, to really kind of want to get in and, and roll up your sleeves and compete against the fangs.